when you hear the cicadas so early in the morning, you know it's stinking hot out. They have some event going on in the park, so you might hear some people talking on loudspeakers. I like this corkscrew that I made in the last video, so I finished it out, wire wheeled it, and put a little bit more detail into it. I put a little bit of curve in the handle right here, which gives it a little bit more of a better feel. I want to give a few of these as gifts, and so I'll figure out a way to make the screws more consistently. I drew out another piece to test an idea. I drilled that hole on about a 45 degree angle. I think you can get the gist of what I'm trying to do. Notice that I'm turning counterclockwise, so this will be for left-handed use. A key is being able to remove the point from the hole. Here I don't have quite enough heat left over. I reheat it for a few seconds, and that makes it easier for me to extract it. But the wrapping and the removing should be accomplished in one heat, and that will save the jig from becoming bent. In this way, I just need to close the last turn. However, I'll straighten this out and give it one more try. The consistency with the spacing and diameter is good. Here we go again. Practice makes perfect. I need to give a big shout out to Stephen Minion Watkins, been saying his name a lot lately, and also Justin Baugh. Thanks very much for the donations. This can definitely help you save some time with fiddling around making the screws. So as I'm sitting here looking at this, I think, hey, I can use the handle end of this jig to get even more consistency. And I wouldn't need my anvil bick to close the last turn. And if the rod you use for the jig is too wide of a diameter, you can later use a smaller diameter rod in this manner. I'm sure this method will be very useful for some people. That's all for now. I'll catch you guys next time. If you need any tooling, check out my website. I've been updating that and will continue to do so.